Welcome to my Harris vs. Yunkin prediction, so let's start. And there we go, so let's start for the likely states, so first off, Illinois. So Illinois, Illinois would just barely drop to a likely to around 11.5 or even 12%. And yeah, while for Iowa and Ohio, I just see them slightly above 12 in this scenario, since I just think if Glenn Youngkin does good as governor of his state of Virginia, he will do decent in these states, so, and like, uh, let's go to the next state, so for Texas, so Texas, another interesting state, it could very well maybe be able to win it as a safe margin, but I think that likely is most likely thing to happen, I think he would win the state of uh, Texas by around anywhere from 9 to 11 percent, and yeah, pretty easy win for him, so for the next state, for Colorado, I think Colorado would still be a likely state, I don't think it would drop down to a lean. It would be pretty close because I would see Harris winning the state of Colorado by around 6%, 7 at most 8. Meanwhile, let's go to Florida, so uh, Florida for this state, uh, tr uh, I assume Glenn Youngkin would get the Trump and uh, the Santos endorsement and uh, Harris would have lower turnout and that would almost surely mean he wins the state of Florida by around and we're from 5 to 8 percent. And now for the other states, so for states in the Northeast like Delaware, uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, and Rhode Island, I just see them dropping below the category because I think someone like Harris, I think you would see lower turnout and especially in New Jersey and Delaware. You could make a case for Rhode Island and Connecticut. I would not be surprised if Connecticut and Rhode Island stay at that margin. I would not be surprised at all. And uh, I'm kind of, in fact, tempted to do that right now, but I think Glenn Youngkin, if he does well, assuming he does above average in his uh, governorship, he would just be able to make these states uh, go below safe. I think New Jersey would be around 11. Same for Delaware. You'd probably see it go to uh, 2016 numbers. Uh, let's go. 2016 numbers around 11. And uh, yeah, I think that will be the map in this part of the country. And now for the second district of Maine, I think it will be really close in this uh, scenario between uh, Youngkin versus Harris. He could theoretically speaking make it a safe state or a safe district, but I think it would just be really, really close. But mm, you know what? I think I'm going to put this as safe because Bear in mind, my safe category is 12%, and as I said, for Florida, if he gets a Trump endorsement, that's already, like, amazing for him. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna change that to safe. It still will be really, really close. So for the next data, let's go to Oregon. So Oregon is another uh, state to look out for. Uh, I mean, not to, like, it's gonna be competitive, but it's going to probably be between safe and likely. 2016, 11% for Clinton, and 2020 went to Biden by 16%, and I think with someone like, they'll get the same turnout as Clinton, lower turnout, I think. Harris, she wins the state, of course, but by a likely margin of around 11.5%. Uh, around and now for North Carolina, yes, I do believe that. Even though Kamala Harris is African-American, I think someone like Glenn Youngkin who is from the neighboring state of Virginia, just up north, would be able to get North Carolina just above the likely margin. I think if you go back, uh, Trump was not the greatest state for the Sun Belt, uh, uh, Sun Belt uh, purple states. Uh. So in 2016, Trump got 3.7 in a really low turnout uh, election by the Democrats. If he wasn't the greatest candidate for this state, and if you get someone like Glenn Youngkin in a Similar scenario to 2016, I think Glenn Youngkin wins the state of North Carolina by around 5 at most 6%. And that's it for the likely states, so as you can see, Glenn Youngkin leads with 235 against Kamala Harris 191. And as I was saying, let's start for the lean states. Uh, starting off, I think uh, Glenn Youngkin will win the state of Arizona by a lean margin. I don't think it's trending too much to the left. Summer to uh, North Carolina, I think that Trump was just not the right candidate for the state. And he also really went out of his way to 
hurt the McCain voters and that of course is why one of the main reasons why he lost in 2020 the state of Arizona and I think that it would probably go back to 2016 margins around anywhere from 2 to 3 percent and Glenn Youngkin is pretty much the perfect candidate for the state of Arizona. And now for New Mexico I think that it drops to a likely state in this scenario. I think uh, Glenn Youngkin would be another decent candidate for this state but still has a lot of democratic uh, power over the state. And I see Harris winning the state of New Mexico by around by around 4%. And now for uh, let's go to Wisconsin. So Wisconsin it's really really trending to the right. And I think that in an election like this, which would be similar to 2016, I think Youngkin would be able to win the state of Wisconsin by a lean margin. And now let's move on to Georgia. I think it just barely misses out on being a, a lean state, I think. Because it's trending to the left, it's really going to become a true toss-up in a purple state. And even in this scenario, Youngkin wins this state by 0.75%. And I could see him winning here by a lean, but... For now, tilt. So for the next uh, states, or I should say district, I think that Harris just uh, barely wins main at large by a tilt margin. I think it would be a lot like uh, 2016 in which Clinton won by 2 to 3%, 2 to 3%. But in this scenario, a lot like 2016, uh, Harris barely wins uh, main at large. I think she does slightly worse than uh, what Hillary did in this state, but I just uh, don't see uh, Glenn Young having as good of an appeal in Maine. I think he does slightly better in New Hampshire, but Maine is more of a Trump-like uh, state, especially the second district. For the next state, so let's go to um, Nevada. So Nevada, assuming he does well as governor, I think uh, Glenn Young is just the right candidate for this state, especially for the Sunbolt, I think he's really, really good for this, for these states. And I think that since the state is likely trending to the right, I think he wins here by around 0.5% in this scenario. And now let's go to the second district uh, of Nebraska. As many of you know, I've said this over and over again, the GOP really missed out on gerrymandering the second district to become either lean or even solid for the GOP. And even in this scenario, Harris gets the votes uh, barely. Even though Youngkin does have really good suburban appeal, it's just not enough. And now let's go to New Hampshire. Uh, I'll do the Rust Belt in a bit. So New Hampshire, it could very well be lean. And I would not be surprised by that. But that's just a... It's how I was saying, uh, it could be lean, but I think it's tilt uh, for this scenario. I just don't see Harris having good appeal in New Hampshire. And now let's move on. So... For Minnesota, it could be a toss-up, I uh, would not be surprised if it's someone else wins the state, but in this scenario, I see Kamala Harris just barely winning the state of Minnesota, a lot like the 2nd District of Nebraska. Uh, Glenn Youngkin could, theoretically speaking, be able to flip the state of Maine, I mean, Minnesota, but unless Harris gets to the point in which her approval rating is really low, maybe in like early... 20s, I just don't see the state dropping for now, but it would be really, really close. For the next state, so, uh, for... You know what, I see Youngkin winning Pennsylvania by a lean margin. I mean, if you go back, uh, Joe Biden, who basically made Pennsylvania his home state, uh, only won it by 1.2%, almost a tilt margin. And I personally do see Pennsylvania trending to the right, and I see Glenn Youngkin winning the state by less than Wisconsin at the moment. And now for Michigan, I think it's really going to be one of those states that's going to be extremely close. And I see Glenn Youngkin winning the state of Michigan by a tilt margin of around, similar to Nevada and New Hampshire, around 0.5% uh, or even 0.75%. And for the last state, for Virginia, the closest state in this election by far, being governor of a state can be really really helpful if you run for president and against Kamala Harris I see Glenn Youngkin barely winning the state of Virginia by a tilt margin assuming he does well as governor bear in mind and this will be the closest state in this election and as you can see Glenn Youngkin wins with 329 electoral votes against Kamala Harris 209 thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe 
stay tuned for the next video.